on the boat. Uh, the winds are opposing. Uh, there's no port in sight. Uh, and the reality that Paul finds uh, is that this boat is breaking up. He does what anybody with good sense would do. Uh, he drops the four sea anchors. He overthrew the cargo, uh, the stuff that they needed and depended on to survive, uh, the stuff designed to get them to safety. Uh, beloved, I heard a word in that message uh, that the Lord says that you can have stuff and still be stuck in a storm. Is there anybody here that knows I got plenty of stuff, uh, but I still face some storms? I, I've got plenty of stuff and network and money and resources and yet I find myself in the storm and I just wonder can I preach to some Pauls and Paulettes in the church on this morning to let you know uh, that stuff can never substitute the Savior that was sent to save you. If you love the Lord, put those hands together and give God a good welcome in the house today. If God has done something for you, open up your mouth and tell him something. If he covered you just coming here today, express your gratitude. If you know that he has done something inside you, open up your mouth and tell him something. Hallelujah. God, we love you. God, we bless you. God, you're worthy. We extol you. You're magnificent and holy. Somebody tell them something. I don't know about you, but I'm glad to be in the house today because God is my strength when I have none. And he is my everything. So we are going to pour out to him in praise on today. Simply saying he is our strength. Did anybody feel his strength today? When they rose this morning on the right side of the bed and God gave you breath in your body, somebody wave to Zion and say thank you. Whoa. Thank you, God. Ah, you are my strength. Strength. Sing that with us, say, you are, you are my strength. Come on, make it a vertical phrase today. Tell them, strength like the world. God, we thank you for being our strength. Tell them, it reaches me. Come on, take it out, say,
one more time. Say you are.
celebrate him. Celebrate him. Celebrate him. Celebrate him. Because we serve a good God. Somebody shout, Lord, you are good. Come on, family. Put those hands together. We are celebrating our most high. He's a good, good God. And I want to hear you. Come on, from the top right. Oh. Your mercies are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness of God. 
Great is your faithfulness, oh God. Great is your faithfulness, oh God. You woke up some this morning, God. And some have come in this place with heavy burdens. But great is your faithfulness, oh God. You woke us up this morning and some have come grieving. But great is your faithfulness, oh God. You woke us up this morning that we might worship you in the fullness of the sanctuary. Your mercy is everlasting. Our God, our God, we thank you. We thank you that we are not consumed. We thank you, God, that you have met us in this place. Inhabit now our praise and our worship, oh God, that we might come before you, that we might stretch out before you, and we might worship the true and the living God. We thank you. Give God a hand clap of praise this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, God, for mercy and grace. Thank you, God, for your presence in this place. To all of those who join us on the World Wide Web, we thank you that you counted it not robbery to be in worship this morning. To those who have gathered on the corner of Alfred and Duke, ain't God good this morning? Hallelujah. Ah, the word of God is before us this morning from the Gospel of John in the first chapter. You all know this by heart from John 1, 1 through 5. It will be on the monitor. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. And, the, and, and he was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life. And that life was the light of all humankind. Keep going because my Bible's over there. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. Oh God, you are light and the darkness cannot overcome you. God, you are light, true light from true light, true God from true God. We thank you, God. We thank you, God. Amen. And beloved, we hear God's word. We hear God's worship. And it brings us, it ushers us to the throne of grace. And we are called to pray in petitionary ways for those whom we love and within our family. So we gather this morning with our hearts focused on petition. We gather lifting up the family of Tamara Jones. We gather lifting up the family of Bernice Josephine Anderson Ott. We gather lifting up the family of Ralph Anthony Diaz. We gather lifting up the family of Michael Griffin. We gather lifting up the family of Ab Wesley Mangrum. We gather lifting up the family of Christine Bethel Dillard. These have made their transition. They are now in glory, walking streets of gold, fully restored, fully revived, fully redeemed. But those that remain yeah, 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 yeah. have hearts burdened. And so we pray. Beloved, who are you praying for this morning? Call their names aloud. Honor God by praying before God, speaking aloud the names of those for whom you pray this morning. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Spirit of the living God fall afresh in this place this morning. That same Ruach that you breathed out and the waters had to stop at the boundaries. That same Ruach that you breathed out and the planets took their place in the heavens. That same Ruach that you breathed into the Adam and to the woman made as his help meet. That same Ruach you breathe in this place, our God. You breathe into these situations because wherever you breathe, God, death has to give way to life. Wherever you breathe, God, that which is broken has to be restored. Wherever you breathe, God, that which is mean and angry and hateful has to be covered with love. Wherever you breathe, God, Spirit of the living God, breathe on these families for whom we pray. Spirit of the living God, breathe on the Reverend Dr. Howard John Wesley, wherever he is, and fill him afresh and anew with your spirit. God, breathe on these, your sons and daughters who have gathered in this place, that we might know the presence of the living God, that we might know the power of the living God, that we might know the living God. 
And God, after you've breathed on us, then empower us and send us into the world to be sign and symbol of your love and your grace and your mercy and your presence. Let us be that living word that somebody might see. Yes, God. Our God, fill us in this hour of worship to overflowing. And we will pray. We will pray to leave here to love and to serve you, Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on your people. Amen and amen. amen. And so we can feel the Spirit of the living God. We just need to walk a little closer with Jesus. So the morning hymn, just the closer walk with thee. Jesus breathed on his people peace, and so we pass the peace. Greet your neighbor with a smile and a great hallelujah. Share with one another as we pass the peace.
as we prepare as we prepare for the ordinance of communion I want to make sure everyone has elements if you do not have elements would you raise your hands so the deacons can attend to you Amen Sisters and brothers, yesterday we were doing some taping for our Bible trivia show called Verses, and there was this running joke throughout the taping that if you did not know the answer, just say Jesus. <laughs> it never hurts to say Jesus. It may not always be the right answer, but there's something about the name of Jesus. And we are here today with an ordinance that reminds us of the sacrifice that that Jesus made on the cross for our sins. We don't deserve it, we didn't earn it, we didn't inherit it, but it is ours. Because God so loved us that God gave his only begotten son. And so today we remember that sacrifice. We remember that on the night he was betrayed, our Lord sat at table with his disciples and he took the bread. It didn't look like this. He blessed it and broke it and said, take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us take and eat together. The Bible goes on to say that in like manner after supper, he took the cup and said, this cup is the new covenant of my blood, which is shed for the remission of sins. Whenever you do this, as often as you do this, you do proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. Let us take this and drink together. God, we thank you that in this simple act, we are reminded of a profound truth. Thank you, God, for loving us, for redeeming us, for saving us and keeping us. And Lord, let us walk out into this world in light of this act, knowing who we are. And enable us, God, to be salt and light in a world that is in need of salt and light. In the precious name of Jesus, we pray with thankful hearts. Amen. Amen. Good morning, Alfred Street. On behalf of our pastor, the Reverend Dr. Howard John Wesley, I welcome you to worship this morning. And if you are visiting with us for the first time, we would love for you to raise your hand so we can recognize you. Do we have any first time visitors today? Amen. Amen. We are so glad you chose to worship with us today. It is our prayer that God will meet you where you are and that you will have a mighty encounter with the God that we serve this day and leave this place changed and come back to see us again soon. Welcome and God bless you. And now I want to invite anyone who is celebrating a birthday. If you're celebrating a birthday this week, would you please stand so we can celebrate you? <laughs> Happy birthday! Happy birthday! Happy birthday! Happy birthday! We thank God for each new day, and when they add up to another 365, that's a special celebration. Every day is a gift from God. Happy birthday. And now I want to recognize those who are celebrating wedding anniversaries this week. Do we have any wedding? Praise God. Amen. <laughs> Amen. 
Amen. We're going to start right here. Woo! Amen. That's good. Thirty-four. I thought you said seventy-four. I was like, I know that's not right. <laughs> Happy anniversary. Twenty-seven. Praise God. Up in the balcony. Twenty-one. Praise God. Did I miss anyone? We thank God for the faithfulness that God has shown in enabling you all to stay together for better and for worse. And we pray God's continued blessing on you in the days to come. Amen. Amen. I just have a few additional announcements for you this morning. As you all know, Pastor Wesley is away during the month of August. And part of that time is rest and part of that time he is um, enabling us to have some of the special guest preachers that we have. What I mean by that is we're accustomed to having John Adolph run through here and we want Elaine Flake to show up at Alfred Street. Well, that means that sometimes they expect Howard John Wesley to show up in their churches. And so we thank God um, and I invite you to pray for him as he does that work in the church universal. And Pastor's 15th anniversary is coming up next month. There are three events we want to bring to your attention. The first is a gospel concert on September 9th at Capital One Hall in Tyson's Corner, 7 p.m. And it's going to have a very special guest artist. I've already told y'all, I can't tell you who it is. Just trust us when we say you will want to be there, all right? Don't be the person who the next day says, oh man, if I had known, trust us when we say you want to be there. Tickets will be available online. Please take advantage of that for members. Purchase them as soon as possible. Then on September 20th here in the sanctuary, we'll have a service praying and praising with the pastor. You know our pastor loves to sing. And he is going to lead us in some of his favorite hymns. And we are going to sing along with him and pray and praise the Lord. Amen. And then on the 24th, we will have our anniversary service with Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church. Wheeler is coming, they're packing deep, they're coming through. And we will all be celebrating at the Strathmore on the 24th at 11 a.m. Praise God. Now it is my delight to let you know that our preacher for this morning is one of our own, the Reverend Dr. Dustin B. Sullivan. Now, Reverend Sullivan um, works for Alfred Street part-time because he also belongs to New Life Loudon, where he is the pastor and serves God's people in that part of Virginia. He is an amazing preacher. He is someone who is an astute student of the word. And you will be delighted when he delivers a word from the Lord this morning. He's here with his family. We're so happy to see them all welcome and God bless you. After the choir sings, the next voice you hear will be that of the Reverend Dr. Dustin B. Sullivan. And I would be remiss if I did not remind us the importance of giving. I am reminded every week about the power and the witness this church has in the world. I didn't know that we were helping um, some organizations that were keeping people in their homes and preventing them from being evicted. Maybe you don't know that we're partnering with churches that help people who are food insecure, not just get food, but good food, food they wanna eat. And we wanna continue to serve God in this way and your faithful giving enables that. There are many ways to give. Continue to do the thing that you know God is teaching us to do. We can't beat God giving. Amen. God bless you.
I love God in here today. Your mercy never fails me All my days I've been held in your hands From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head Oh, I will sing Of the goodness of God Have led me through the fire 
Anybody grateful? Yes. Anybody grateful? When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be when we all see Jesus. We'll sing. What a up your hands unto your father there's many blessings he wants to bestow upon you but you've got to be in the position to be ready to receive it because he's just that good keep those hands lifted
life. Come on, y'all. All my life, you've been faithful. Come on. All my life. We come to this moment, we come to this moment to just present ourselves before God. We come to stand before a God who has never failed us, a God that has been so, so good. A God that has been with us every step of the journey. God whose presence we stand in right now. Will you sing of the goodness of God? Sing of the goodness of the Lord. Sing of the goodness of your Creator. Sing of the goodness of your Father. All my life he's been faithful, y'all. Come on, I'm not trying to push you this morning. I'm just wondering, do you know all my life he's been so good? Yes, Lord God. Yes, Lord God. Yes, Lord God. Of the goodness of God. Praise the Lord, Alfred Street. Praise the Lord, Alfred Street. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praises shall continually be in my mouth. Myself shall make his boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. You can do better than that. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. That's an invitation. I'm going to do it if you don't do it. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his holy name together. We give God great praise on this, the Lord's day that he has made. We've come into his house and gathered in his name to worship Christ the Lord. It's good to be home, family. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. It's good to be here one more time. I tell you, I need your prayers this morning. I'm feeling something I haven't felt in almost 20 years when I stood here to give my trial sermon. I'm feeling the same jitters that I did. So if you'll just pray even now, I believe the Lord will show up. I give God honor and grace for this opportunity to our pastor, the Reverend Dr. Howard John Wesley for allowing me this opportunity to practice and to proclaim my convictions of the Lord Jesus Christ to the Reverend Dr. Judy Fentress Williams and to all the staff and associate ministers here, to my brothers and sisters in Christ and creation, to my family, to my children, to my wife. Won't you just rise that we might honor you on today. Praise the Lord. Baby girl left when she was just in a cradle and the Lord brought us back. I give honor that the leadership of our church, the New Life Church Loudoun, is here with us on this, on this morning. Dr. DeLester Brown and Deacon Vanessa Allen swung by my house at an early morning hour so we could make an hour journey to Alexandria. So help me give God praise for those that faithfully <laughs> serve. There is a word from the Lord I dare not take too long. I invite your attention to stand in reverence to God's holy word. There's a word on this Sunday morning that finds us in the Acts of the Apostles, the 27th chapter, beginning at the 39th verse, excuse me, the 37th verse. When you have it, say amen. I'm going to be reading from the New Revised Standard Version, prayerful that you'll be able to follow along in whatever translation the Lord blesses you to have. Acts 27 Beginning at verse 37, you'll find these familiar words. We were in all 276 persons in the ship. After they had satisfied their hunger, they lightened the ship by throwing the wheat into the sea. In the morning, they did not recognize the land, but they noticed bay with a beach on which they planned to run the ship ashore if they could. So they cast off the anchors and left them in the sea. At the same time, they loosened the ropes that tied the steering oars. Then, hoisting the foresail to the wind, they made for the beach. But striking a reef, they ran the ship aground. The bow stuck and remained immovable, but the stern was being broken up by the force of the waves. The soldiers' plan was to kill the prisoners, so that none might swim away and escape. But the centurion, wishing to save Paul, kept them from carrying out their plan. He ordered those who could swim 
to jump overboard first and make for the land and the rest to follow. Some on planks, others on pieces of the ship. And so it was that all were brought safely to land. Some, some, y'all ought to get this, some on planks, some on broken pieces of the ship, but all made it safely to land. For the time that is ours, beloved, on this, the Lord's Day, I want to preach from the topic, you're going to make it. You're going to make it. Come on, look at somebody. Look at a neighbor. Look at a brother or a sister. You're, you're going to make it. Father, I need your help right now, Father God, that you would speak through me, God, that you would purge my lips with coals from your altar. God, give me preaching power and cover me in your grace. Open the heart of a listener, God, on today that someone might be set free. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Let those that are depending on the Lord say amen. 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 Y'all, it's hard to appreciate what really goes down in Acts 27 if that's where you pick up the text. Acts 27 tells you the story of the storm, uh, but you got to read from the beginning to learn the story of Paul's life. Uh, it's not the event that I'm trying to talk about being the storm, but the character development, Dr. Judy, that's the most important element in this story line. Is there anybody in the church today? What did it take to get here? Uh, what were the lessons Paul had to learn along the way? How did God take metal and build, bend it into a masterpiece? Uh, Y'all got to know that the story doesn't begin in chapter 27. God had been present in Paul's life a mighty long time. And I'm trying to let you know not just the story of Paul, but also the story of you and the story of me. Uh, that is not just the context, but it's the pretext of the text uh, that gives definition and contour uh, to where you are right now. Is there anybody here uh, that can admit on a Sunday morning uh, that I've not always been the way that I am? I've not always had a suit on my back. Uh, I've not always smelled the way that I've smelled. And yet it's been the grace of God uh, that has held my life together uh, when time and situation tried to pull me apart. Y'all, it's the, it's the character development uh, that doesn't always begin with immediate success. It's the character development uh, that does not come without a struggle. It's the character development, uh, that how God takes you and stretches you out of something so that he can shape you into another thing. It's the character development that we find in Acts, the 27th chapter, as Paul has made his way uh, to Jerusalem, the Bible says that he desired to be there by Pentecost, but he received back in Acts ch chapter 20 and verse 23 uh, a message from the Holy Spirit uh, that testified that in every city you'll run into, Paul, you'll find you'll be bound and have afflictions. Uh, is there anybody here that's ever set out in a journey uh, only to get the bad news that at every step you're going to meet bound? and afflictions, uh, that if that wasn't bad enough, uh, if you keep on reading in the text to chapter number 21, uh, you'll find that it's the same Paul uh, on his way to Jerusalem who runs into the prophet Agabus, uh, who is greeted with the same message. Matter of fact, Agus, Agabus pushes it just a little bit further and strips the belt off of Paul's waist and ties it around his hands and ties it around his feet. Y'all don't get an image of it. He tied it around his hands and he tied it around his feet and he said that everywhere you go that the Jews will deliver you to the Gentiles and you'll be in that posture. Huh? But if you keep on reading to the end of chapter 21, You'll find that Paul has been worshiping and witnessing. Uh, you'll find that as he's worshiping and he's witnessing uh, that he's provoked people who bum rush the temple. Uh, you'll find, beloved, that he's bound and he's berated. Uh, he's drugged by an angry mob. And by the time you get to verse 35, you find Paul locked behind bars. 
Are you in the story this morning that, catch this, he doesn't incite an insurrection. Uh, He doesn't leave a fancy penthouse on a private plane in order to be booked. Uh, This ain't his fourth indictment, beloved. Uh, He's not tagged P01135809. He can't pay his way out of this uh, with pack money in order to post bond. No, Paul's got to sit in this jail for two whole years. Yeah, he sits in this jail cell for two whole years while people plot to kill him. And the Lord shows up after Paul gives the testimony and he says these simple words, Paul, you got to keep your courage. I thought I talked to somebody in this place today who finds themselves in a difficult place, who finds themselves in a position where you haven't seen God move since the last time you saw God move. I want to talk to some people in the house that that have been waiting on the Lord uh, and yet are getting frustrated in waiting, uh, that the message that God gives some people incarcerated uh, is to keep your courage. Uh, you got to keep your courage, beloved, uh, when all hell comes apart. Uh, you got to keep your courage uh, when they scandalize your name. You've got to keep your courage. Uh, when they plot on you to kill you, you you got to learn how to keep your courage. Ah, the breakdown of the text is that Paul uh, keeps his courage. And Paul makes his way, Dr. Judy. Paul uh, stands before Festus. He stands before Felix. He stands before Agrippa who said, Paul, I was almost persuaded uh, to believe in Christ. And, and in that moment, Paul was acquitted of the charges. Two years he sat to be acquitted of the charges, and now Paul is exonerated and he's set free. Uh, he set free that he might continue with the work that the Lord gave him to do to travel to Rome, uh, that he might proclaim his name. Uh, Paul is set free, beloved, to set sail to Italy. He, he's got a charge to keep. He's got a charge to keep and a God to glorify. Uh, that Paul makes his way, beloved, uh, from Sidon to Cyprus to Lycia. Uh, but something happens when Paul gets to the point called Pharaoh. Havens. Have you ever been in a point in your life when you tried to be faithful to God, try to do the thing that God called you to do, do the thing uh, that nobody else wanted to do, do what God had laid on your heart as an assignment for your life uh, and found yourself uh, in some difficult and inclement conditions. Uh, Paul finds himself making his way from Sidon to Cyprus, from Cyprus to Lycia. Uh, but the Bible says uh, by the time Paul gets to Fair Havens, uh, the wind Winds were against him. Winds were against him, beloved. The winds weren't blowing in his direction. Uh, He's en route to Rome, uh, but there's a pressing problem uh, that he can't control the conditions. He can't control the fact that the storms keep on coming. He can't control the fact that the winds keep on blowing. He can't control uh, that the boat is battered by the sea. Uh, And this ain't your ordinary wind. No, this cyclonic, tempestuous wind has got a name, beloved, called Eureka Low. Uh, Eureka Low. Uh, I don't know any winds that are named that don't come like hurricanes. Uh, I don't know any winds that don't come that don't sweep you off your course. Uh, But Paul finds himself in the middle middle of the oceans in a place that is called Fair Havens, but there's nothing fair about the situation at all. For after two whole years, God, can't you just send the wind behind his sails? After two whole years, God, can't you just make a way for him to get to Rome? Uh, And yet here he is finding himself on this ship on the way uh, to Rome. And yet the Bible says the winds were against him. Y'all acting like you don't know this story, but let me pull up and park on the pew next to you. Has it ever rained sideways in your life? Uh, Has it ever rained so hard that you didn't know which way the rain was coming from? Uh, Have you ever been in a situation uh, where you didn't know how you were going to get through, uh, and yet you found yourself tossed and battered by the storm? That's where we meet our brother Paul this morning. Paul having a reality check. That this voyage won't come without a major loss. Huh? That's where we meet Paul this morning. That we won't emerge from this storm without some bruises and broken pieces. Uh, that's where we find our brother Paul. That we won't get out of this situation with everything that we came in here with. Uh, 
that we've come too far, beloved, to turn back now. Pregnant question of the text is how do you deal with the damages? How do you deal with the damages in your life? How do you deal with life delivers something that you didn't expect? Uh, how do you deal when it shows up with as sickness that you can't stop? Uh, how do you deal when it shows up like a divorce you can't do nothing about? How do you deal with it when it's a diagnosis followed by a prognosis that's problematic? How do you deal with the damages? When the unemployment is unavoidable and unenviable, how, beloved, do you deal with the damages? Life lesson of the text, that you got to deal with damages, beloved. You got to deal with them and not run from them. And I know that's not a word that we like to hear because we like the sermon to make us feel good so that when we walk out of here uh, that we already have the answer. But beloved, sometimes the answer is in your strength and your stamina to stay right where you are. Sometimes, beloved, it doesn't fit neatly in three simple points. No, sometimes, beloved, you've got to stand in the storm. Uh, sometimes, beloved, you don't always get the answers to your prayers. Uh, but God will show up next to you uh, in whatever jail cell you feel like you're in this morning and tell you like he told Paul, uh, beloved, you got to keep your courage. Keep your courage, beloved. Tell your neighbor, keep your courage. Keep your courage. Keep your courage. Keep your courage. For life will deliver you to some storms that you got to go through in order to get through. Yeah. Uh, that summoned... Yeah. As I read that, that, that reminded me of that second stanza uh, of that fabled poem, uh, See It Through by Edgar A Albert Guest. It says, uh, black may be the clouds about you and your future may seem grim, but don't let your nerve desert you. Keep yourself in fighting trim. Uh, if the worst is bound to happen, spite of all that you can do, running from it will not save you. See it through. Paul can't get out this storm. Paul's got to go through it, beloved. It may be dark and stormy. I may feel lonely and lost. Uh, and here it is, beloved. I may have to wrestle with the reality that God sent this storm for me. Come on, let's get tight in the ship. Uh, you always put it on the devil. Uh, we always put it on the devil and his imps. Uh, but what if my brother and my sister, uh, God sent this storm for me. You keep reading in the text. Get over to verse 22 of chapter 27. You're going to find that the Bible says that with no food, with little faith, Paul says to those with him on the ship, keep your courage. Uh, he doesn't stop there. Paul says, uh, we're going to lose this boat, uh, but you won't lose your life. Uh, I just wanted to talk to somebody uh, scared to lose the boat in order to save your life. I just wanted to talk to somebody that's holding on to things that, that you think are determined to be with you to the end. I, I just wanted to talk to somebody afraid to let go that sometimes, beloved, you've got to be willing to lose the boat in order to save your life your life. Uh, am I talking to anybody on a Sunday morning uh, in here? Uh, you got to be willing to lose it all to save your life. Y'all, I'm not talking about what I read. I'm talking about what I had to live through. You got to lose the boat. Lost everything that I thought I needed. You got to lose the boat sometimes. Uh, the things that think qualify you, you got to be willing to lose the boat. In order to save your life. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's about survival, beloved. Ah, that fearless faith uh, can't form in you until you surrender to the will of God that you can't outrun what was sent to develop you. I'll say it again. We talk about faith as the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things unseen, uh, but faith can't form until you surrender to the will of God uh, that you can't outrun the thing that was sent to develop you. Let me flip it another way. You got to be mature enough, beloved, to see what God doesn't want you to miss. Yeah, you got to be mature enough 
Uh, not to dismiss that thing, uh, but to see that thing uh, that God doesn't want you to miss. There, on the boat, uh, the winds are opposing. Uh, there's no port in sight. Uh, and the reality that Paul finds uh, is that this boat is breaking up. He does what anybody with good sense would do. Uh, he drops the four sea anchors. He overthrew the cargo, uh, the stuff that they needed and depended on to survive, uh, the stuff designed to get them to safety. Uh, beloved, I heard a word in that message uh, that the Lord says that you can have stuff and still be stuck in a storm. Is there anybody here that knows I got plenty of stuff, uh, but I still face some storms? I, I've got plenty of stuff and network and money and resources and yet I find myself in the storm and I just wonder can I preach to some Pauls and Paulettes in the church on this morning to let you know uh, that stuff can never substitute the Savior that was sent to save you. <laughs> stuff can never substitute the Savior sent to save you. They're on this boat. The winds are against them. They've offloaded some stuff in order to survive. Uh, and the Bible uh, tells us that as they're turning these things over to the sea, uh, that you may mourn the loss, but you've got to survive the storm. Survive. That Latin word, super vivre, survive. That word that lets us know uh, that you got to super live. Survive. Uh, survive is more than just maintaining. Survive is more than a panic. No. Survive is locking into the thing that God has promised for your life uh, that you've got to live longer. Uh, you've got to live over. Uh, you've got to live past. Uh, whatever it is that's trying to take you out. Beloved, I'm telling you on good authority uh, I've had to live over. Uh, I've had to live through. Uh, I've had to live past uh, some things that tried to take me out. Beloved, I'm trying to help the church today. Child of God, you can make it through this storm because you were built to survive. Uh, let me try it another way. You can't die where God has destined you to survive. You can't quit when God's making something more out of the story. Uh, beloved, sometimes you got to throw off some old weights uh, off of a sinking ship uh, in order that you can be fit to survive. How do I know that's how it happened? Because the Bible declares that they've been fighting this storm for 14 days. Yeah, that doesn't sound like anything to you, but it sounds like a mighty good encouragement to me uh, because the fact of the matter is if the storm were as powerful as the storm is descriptive to be, uh, the storm described to be, uh, the storm would have taken Paul out the first night. If the storm had the power, the, the power uh, to rage the winds and to break up the ship, uh, it would have killed all 276 the first night. But the end of the story tells us that all 276, let the church say all 276, all 276 made it on dry land. Fearless faith is knowing God will bring me through. Fearless faith is knowing God will guide me out. Fearless faith is knowing that God will give me strength. If that's all you take from this sermon, beloved, hold on to it tight. God will bring me through. God will guide me out. God will give me strength. I, I heard I had a church this morning. God, God will bring me through. God will guide me out. God will give me strength. Let me hasten to the end uh, that you got to learn how to let go of stuff. You not only got to learn how to let go of stuff, you got to learn how to swim. Yeah, the Bible tells us, ooh, the Bible tells us uh, that this storm didn't cease. Uh, the Bible tells us that this wind kept breaking up the boat. Uh, but the Bible also declares uh, that the prisoners started swimming. Yeah. The Bible says those that knew how to swim jumped off the board boat first. 
The Bible says uh, those that could grab a broken piece grabbed a broken piece. Uh, the Bible tells us uh, that when the guards, when the soldiers would have taken Paul, taken the soldiers out, uh, that they did not kill the soldiers uh, for the sake of Paul, uh, which tells me that there were some soldiers, there were some, there were some incarcerated on the ship that had to learn how to swim with shackles. Everything in this text is descriptive. There's nothing that the text has left out. It, it tells you what happened to the bow. It tells you what happened to the stern. Uh, it tells you about the name of the wind. Uh, but nowhere in this text does it say uh, that the soldiers unshackled the prisoners uh, in order for them to swim to safety. Uh, what is that saying? That's good news to somebody uh, that sometimes, beloved, uh, you got to learn how to swim with the shackles. Uh, sometimes, beloved, you got to learn uh, how to swim in difficult situations. Situations. Uh, sometimes, beloved, you got to learn uh, how to keep on making a way. Uh, and when you make a way, God will make a way. Uh, I got to close, beloved. The time is at hand. Uh, but, beloved, whether you're on, uh, on the ship, whether you've got a broken piece or a broken board, uh, whether you've got uh, shackles that you've got to swim through, uh, the good news of the text is this, that 276 made it to the other side. 276 made it to the shore uh, when the boat won't last hold on to God uh, when the boat breaks up hold on to God uh, when nobody else knows how to call on his name call on the name of the Lord uh, and the Lord makes a way out of no way uh, to get you and I to the other side uh, how do I know it beloved because I lived it how do I know it beloved because his word said it uh, how do I know it because that's why Christ came and died for us uh, that we would not be lost and die in the situations that we're in uh, for God makes a way to get all of us to the other side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're living through a bad chapter, that's not the end of the story. <laughs> If you're living through a bad chapter, just keep on flipping the pages. Uh, if you're living through a nightmare, keep on reading. Because uh, I found out when I previewed the text uh, that the story can't end in bad. The story's got to end and God got the victory. Uh, the story of your life can't end in sadness. No, the story of your life has to be and he received the glory. Uh, the story can't end uh, and they took you out. No, the story's got to end uh, and God fought my battle. Uh, and all I I'm trying to tell somebody uh, on this Sunday morning is if you're in a bad chapter, just keep on reading the text. Because the text has to end. And God got the glory. Yeah, that's the shout on the morning. Uh, the Bible declares as it concludes the 27th chapter uh, that 276 made it on land. But if you flip over to chapter 28, the Bible says that they found out that they were in a place called Malta. Malta. Malta, that don't mean nothing. You better get back in Bible study. Malta. Because if you knew the meaning of the name Malta, you'd know that the meaning of Malta is place of refuge. Malta. Malta, the place that God had already prepared. Malta. Sometimes you got to live and navigate your way through a storm so God can deliver you to a place called Malta. I'm mighty glad to know the Lord this morning. I'm mighty glad he still makes places called Malta. I'm mighty glad that there's still a place of restoration and refuge. I'm mighty glad that even in the middle of my storm, God shows up so he can get the glory. You're going to make it, my brother. You're going to make it, my sister. You ought to tell yourself, I'm going to make it. I'm going to make it. The story can't end here. The story's got to end, and God gets the victory. Beloved of God, beloved of God in this place, you can't die when God has destined you to live. You have to keep your courage. And no matter what is breaking up around you, God will get the glory. Would you join me in thanking the man of God for the word of God this morning? Hallelujah.
would you stretch out your hand? Because this brother has to preach again. God, we ask you to restore your son. We ask you to fill him again, that when he stands before his own people this day, that you might deliver yet again another word. Make him pregnant with the power of the Holy Spirit, that what is birthed in that place is like what was birthed here, new life, new hope, new power, new presence. We thank you, God, for the Reverend Dr. Dustin B. Sullivan and all God's children said, amen. Amen. Beloved of God, you are not to die when God has destined you to live. And if you worry about how you can make it through this storm, we want to introduce you to Jesus. There might be somebody here today who has never had an experience of the kind of God who can deliver you to Malta. But if you know him, raise your hand in this place right now so somebody can see what it looks like to be a blood-washed, blood-bought child of the King. And if you desire to walk with this Jesus, we welcome you. We welcome you first to come to a saving knowledge of Jesus. And then we ask you to come on in from the dangerous waters to this ark of safety. You are welcomed at Alfred Street. The Reverend Dr. Howard John Wesley would love to be your pastor and we would love to be your brothers and sisters. Whether you are in the World Wide Web or right here, you are welcomed at Alfred Street. You can go to the web and go to deacons with an S at alfredstreet.org and give us your name and some basic information and one of these deacons will reach out to you today. And if you're in this place, there will be deacons here at the altar and deacons in the narthex to welcome you, to pray with you, to guide you. Come, beloved, because the God who will carry you through this storm stands with arms wide open, waiting to welcome you. Come on, VOT, sing for us that we might find our center as we prepare to leave this place. God of all hope fill you with joy and peace in believing so that by the power of the Holy Spirit you might abound in hope. Amen.